Hello, I'm Bob Harris of Decorative Concrete Institute. Welcome to Duraman's training and educational series for industrial and decorative concrete flooring systems. How you prepare the concrete uh, surface is probably one of the most important considerations for putting any of these applications down, whether it's a trowel down mortar or a high build epoxy or decorative metallic or a skim coat. How you treat that concrete surface is paramount to the success of these applications. We're going to go through the different profiling methods, but before we do that, we need to talk about the importance of safety. Safety is not a game. Safety starts with some of the basic considerations. Uh, certainly proper eye protection. Sometimes you're working with uh, grinding equipment or shot blasting equipment that could project um, you know, contaminants from the concrete into your eye, so make sure you have proper uh, eye protection. A lot of um, applicators don't even consider knee pads. A career of uh, being on your hands and knees could really damage your knees, so make sure you wear um, good knee pads. Also, respirators. Be concerned uh, if it's just dust or if you're working with a solvinated product. So, so if you're working with a solvinated product, for example, this has to be ha uh, rated for, for solvents. So, so safety's not a game. Make sure you protect yourself. Starting with some of the basics, when we talk about CSP, what does that mean? CSP stands for Concrete Surface Profile. There's a national organization that's called ICRI, which stands for the International Concrete Repair Institute. And they have these wonderful um, guide selection chips, if you will. And basically what we're, what we're looking for up here is a, there's a three letters that says CSP, which stands for Concrete Surface Profile. And this gives you an idea of what the surface profile is. Now, depending on the material that you're using, it may require a different concrete surface profile. Over here, this is a CSP of one, which is very smooth. So you can see on the other side of the spectrum, this is a CSP, concrete surface profile of 10, which is very aggressive and very rough and coarse. This would be considered heavy, heavy scarification. For most of our applications, we're looking for somewhere in the range of between, say, two to five, depending on the mill thickness. So starting with some of the basic considerations when it comes to uh, preparing your surface for these applications, let's review some of the tools that you would need. Some basic scrapers, perhaps you have drywall mud on the surface, mastic, paint, spoils. So you'd need the basic scrapers and certainly these come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes all the way up to, you know, where you can walk behind and scrape the surfaces like this. Oftentimes we're going to need grinding uh, equipment or handheld grinders, not only for perhaps chasing a crack, but also for getting up close to a wall. So we'll need to, to use a, a different combination of grinders. This grinder, for instance, is uh, outfitted with a blade that's specific for chasing cracks. And what it does is it widens out, widens out the crack, allowing for your crack filling material to get down in and absorb into the crack. On small projects, you can actually obtain a CSP, concrete surface profile, with what we call a handheld dustless grinder. And on the bottom of this grinder, we have what's referred to as a diamond cup wheel, and this is a segmented, meaning it's not a continuous rim diamond. There are different segments, which allows the air to help cool the diamonds for more aggressive cutting. This is a really great tool uh, for profiling. It is very labor intensive, but uh, you might want to consider this tool in your arsenal when it comes to preparing the surface. On a small scale, say for example if you're putting down a skim coat, you might not need as aggressive of a profile than some of the other thicker build materials. And you can actually get away with your standard 175 RPM buffing machine um, with a variety of different pads. Now this is what we refer to as a stripping pad. Depending on how hard or how soft the concrete is, you might be able to get enough of a profile simply by using this with maybe a little bit of water. Progressing to the next more aggressive um, sanding device, we have this which is called a sanding screen. So oftentimes what we'll do is we'll take a spray adhesive and we'll spray the bottom of the pad and we'll stick our sanding screen right to the bottom of the pad, let it dry for 30 or 40 minutes. That way when you put it on the bottom of the machine, the sanding screen doesn't just uh, 
just uh, hurdle away right there. So that's what we refer to as a sanding screen. Typically you're going to be in about an 80, 80 grit to 100 grit screen. Getting a little bit more aggressive, we have sandpaper, which is the same logic. You would use your spray adhesive, stick it to the bottom of your buffing pad, and this is great for, uh, for profiling your concrete if you're putting a thin mill material down. And here's an example of where we've already stuck it down to the bottom. So in essence, this, this sanding disc is glued to our, to our pad. Getting more aggressive. So now perhaps we're going to put maybe a stampable overlay down or a self-leveling compound where we're building a little bit thicker, maybe a quarter uh, up to a half an inch. We might want to consider using what we refer to as a dustless grinder. Now this tool is uh, what we refer to as a planetary head. You'll notice the three heads spin one way while the drum rotates uh, the opposite way, counterclockwise. And on the bottom of these, we have what's called metal bond diamonds, okay? This happens to be a double segment, meaning there's two different diamond plugs here that you see. And as you can imagine, these types of diamonds come in a whole wide variety of different grits, or single segments as well. Now, for most concrete, what uh, applicators are using to profile their concrete for these applications is generally around an 80 grit diamond. This is an 80 grit. And again, depending on the concrete, how hard or how soft and the age of the concrete, an 80 grit diamond like this would probably produce somewhere around a three or a four profile. If you needed to get more aggressive than that, you would change your grit like we have here, and you would drop down to a 40 grit. So the lower your grit, the more aggressive your profile is going to be. So this is a great tool um, for, for preparing your concrete for different um, cement-based toppings and also high-performance coatings as well. Graduating up from there, we have a tool that's referred to as a shot blaster. Now this is considered kind of a, a baby size. This is only about eight inches wide. But this is going to um, also really give you a great profile. Now we're getting into thicker build materials. Inside of this um, holder right here, basically we have a steel shot, okay? The steel shot comes in a wide variety of sizes. A smaller size, for example, 170, and it graduates up from there. So generally we're using somewhere in the vicinity of about a 220 um, size steel shot. And basically it's a self-contained material. So what happens is the steel is uh, forced down onto the concrete and we have a vacuum recovery system that collects the, the airborne particulate and it recycles the shot. So if the machine is working properly, this is a really great uh, tool to use for your concrete surface profiling. Other than that, those are some of the basic tools, but now you can also consider some other products as well. Um, in your toolbox for preparing the, the concrete surface properly. Um, unfortunately, we know that concrete does crack or have a tendency to crack, and there are a wide variety of different products that you can use. This is a great product. Um, I like it. It's actually a structural urethane, but the nice thing about it is we can prepare the crack properly by crack chasing it like we previously showed you, uh, the blade you would use a wire wheel to clean out the crack, vacuum it, and then you have a, a crack that's ready to be filled. The nice thing about this material is once it dries, it's a very rigid material, but what I like about it is I can get back out on it probably within five to seven minutes. So, so time is money, so if we're out on a job site and we have to fill the crack, you're literally grinding back over it very, very expeditiously. From there, we have simple degreasers that we use. Perhaps you're doing a garage floor and you have some oil stains. There are different degreasing agents that can be used. And there are also other uh, products that can be used to actually lift, lift the oil stains from the concrete surface. We have all-purpose cleaners that will lightly, lightly just etch the surface. Also, sometimes you're going to have um, scenarios where you have mastics. Uh, carpet glue that you can't get off with some of these other tools, you might need to consider using a chemical stripper. And then also, there are different products that can profile the concrete 
This is a gelled acid product that works really nicely for real thin build materials like an epoxy, for example, or a microtopping. So you need to consult with your Duraman representative to find out which of these um, products best suits your application. Let's show you how some of these tools work.